Trinkets are an integral part of League of Legends, and seeing the new Fiddlesticks rework got me thinking about how important trinkets are and how often they're misused. Today we're going to be going over the three main usages of trinkets and what each class should be looking for in a trinket. Now you might be thinking, but I place my wards all the time and, and I use sweeper off cooldown and I use scryer's orb, I'm, I'm using my trinkets. Yes, you might be using them, but you're probably using them wrong. In fact, even as high up as diamond in about 80% of the games that I play, trinkets are all just being used wrong or not at all. Remember that the vision game is very straightforward you should only be placing or clearing wards if it achieves a certain goal. Just because you have two wards doesn't mean you should always go place one immediately. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to check out our website, GameLeap.com. There we have hundreds of guides, just like this one, all sorted into a quick and easy to use courses system. We have courses both on the five fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses. So if that is something that interests you, then make sure to check us out using the link in the description below. If you are looking to improve your League of Legends gameplay, our website is the best learning tool out there for you, so make sure to check it out. Alright, so now back to the topic of trinkets. I'm actually going to start with the bot lane, which is a bit atypical of me, but I'm doing this simply because bot lane is the simplest and most straightforward when it comes to trinkets. Pretty much no matter what you play in that lane, you're going to be getting the same trinkets at the same time every single game, and you're going to be using them for the same usages. Starting with the support, you're not really going to want to use your trinkets inside of brushes early on into the laning phase unless you are forced to. The reason why you don't want to put wards in the brush every time it's off cooldown is because then you're not going to have any wards left for the river, and the river is much more of a threat to you. Remember, the jungler is going to camp bot lane. This is just what the meta is like right now. In fact, the jungler camping bot has been a viable strategy for the past, like, three years. There's two people down there, so your ganks are going to be twice as impactful. Now this is not to say that the jungler won't always camp bot every single game. Of course, there are some games where the jungler camps top or just sits mid the whole game. But in the majority of the games that you play more times than not, you're going to be seeing the jungler sitting bot lane for the majority of the game. So the next time that you see the enemy Lulu walk into the lane brush, think to yourself, okay, is this Lulu being inside that brush actually a threat? Do I need vision of her or can I spare the ward and put it inside the river brush saving me from a potential gank? A lot of enchanters will walk in and out of the brushes and that's okay that's a part of the game. Just because they're sitting in the brush does not mean you have to ward it. Usually a lot of the time especially when I'm playing in lower elos I'll just walk into the brush as a support to try and bait out their wards. Please do not get baited into this. If you're spending all of your wards inside the lane you won't have any for the river you're gonna get ganked and you're gonna have a bad time. So when is a good time to put wards in the lane brush? Well, typically this is going to be when you're playing against some sort of engage based support like Blitzcrank or Nautilus or Leona. That way you have the time to react to them posturing aggressively walking towards you in that brush. If you don't have vision in that brush and they start walking towards you out of it, you're gonna be half a second behind on realizing that they want to engage onto you. Alternatively, there are also a lot of picks that have some sort of backloaded power. This is going to be stuff like Swain with his pull. It has a long cast time and travel time, but you can hide some of that while being in a brush. Or Tarek, which has an animation before his stun lands. He can mask that animation in the brush, flash out of it, and get an instantaneous stun on you. Stuff like this. The final case where in the laning phase you would ward a lane brush is if you were playing against some sort of jungler that wants to lane gank you. This is going to be something like Rengar, Zac, Elise. You want to have a warning before they're directly on top of you. Moving on to the support's counterpart, the ADC. In the lane phase, your job is identical to the supports. You're playing the same lane, you have the same objective when it comes to wards. Whatever the support isn't warding, you pick up that slack. Now on to jungle and mid lane. These roles are paired together in the laning phase because they work together a lot with their vision and vision denial. A lot of the time they're going to be placing pinks around each other and protecting each other and they're going to be sweeping, clearing with each other, getting deep vision with each other. Ideally jungle and mid is played as a team. 
Now the jungler has quite a few options. Either they could sit on a trinket, try and get some deep vision, or protect a specific lane that might be especially susceptible to any ganks. Or if they're a hyper aggressive jungler in the early game, like say Elise, you might want to swap your trinket for a sweeper. Instead of having a warding totem, if you have a sweeper, it allows you to remove wards when you are ganking, forcing a specific lane to play very safe, because they won't know if you're still there or if you've left. As a jungler, when your laning phases are progressing, you're going to want to have a sweeper. You're not going to want to sit on a warding totem for the entire game unless you're playing like Lee Sin. This is because you are the one that is responsible for being at every single objective fight, and vision denial is very, very important for objectives. Now, you can still clear out vision with the sweeper, that's not going anywhere, that's always going to be an option, but the more important thing is you're not going to be doing this around lanes as frequently, because once objectives start spawning like Dragon and Rift Herald, you're going to be using your sweeper around them more frequently to deny vision around that, so you can either take it for free or make them think that you're on it, make them waste time checking it. Now I mentioned that jungle plays very closely with mid when it comes to the vision game, and this is always true because you're always going to be around and passing through mid lane the most. It's the center of the map, the heat map of the mid lane is always going to be the hottest. For this reason, you're always going to be wanting to place pink wards in your river pixel brush by your mid laner sweeping around the mid lane. This stuff is going to allow your mid laner to play more aggressive, get deeper wards, perhaps in the enemy jungle, which will allow you to track the enemy jungler a lot easier and shut them down. On the other hand, if you're the one playing mid lane, then this is exactly what you should be looking for. If your jungler is taking care of the vision close to you and in the river, that's going to protect from rotations from your mid lane. That's going to allow you to ward out the enemy jungle, get deep vision on either camps or gank roots. Now, the jungle responsibility of defensive warding for the mid lane can also be extended to the support. The later the game goes on, the more opportunities the support is going to have to roam, which might give them an opportunity to place a pink ward on the opposite side of the mid lane. This is going to give the mid lane as much safety as they could possibly have and allow them to play as aggressive as they possibly could. You're probably thinking, well, why isn't it the mid laner's responsibility for defensive wards around mid lane? And this is for one very simple reason. Mid lane is the lane that is most easily able to acquire priority in their lane, which means they shove their wave into the enemy tower, which gives them time to do things. Support and jungle are not going to have as much time to be doing this. Jungle is a role where efficiency really comes into play, so wasting 5 to 10 seconds to get a deeper ward closer to the enemy jungle a lot of the time isn't worth it when you're going to be missing out on maybe a camp for doing this, and the mid laner could have done it without missing anything. Support, on the other hand, has some very long roam timers, but these roam timers are very limited, and you have to be back to your lane by the time it crashes into your tower, otherwise your ADC is at risk of being dove. Typically, this is going to make you choose between two things. Either you go for the deep vision in the enemy jungle, or you go for a play, and 90% of the time, that play is going to be more impactful than the deep vision because again, the mid laner can get that deep vision without missing anything and without being forced to make a choice between two things. So now that we understand why the mid laner is going to be the one going for that aggressive deep vision early on into the game, let's understand how we can do it safely. Because if you just blindly walk into the enemy jungle without a care in the world, you're going to die. So, in order to prevent that, we're going to take some safeguards. First, you want to crash a wave into the enemy tower. This is going to de-incentivize the enemy mid laner from just following you wherever you go. Now, just because you crash a wave into the enemy tower does not mean that they're going to stay and farm that wave. Their jungler might be nearby, so they might walk off of that wave and go for a kill on you. So you want to pay attention to how your lane is reacting to you crashing it into the tower. If they're just farming the wave and letting you walk away, you're probably safe to walk deeper into the enemy jungle. The last thing that you want to check is you want to make sure that everybody is present in their lane before you go into the enemy jungle. If the enemy support is missing or the enemy top is missing and you roam towards them, you might just walk straight into them and again die. Okay, but what if you're playing mid lane and your entire team is a bunch of chimps? They're not playing around you, you're playing constantly 1v2, you don't have any wards nearby you, your jungler didn't place a pink ward for you, neither did your support. What do you do in this scenario? 
Well, in this scenario, then you can't really play for a priority and deep vision in the enemy jungle. So instead, the only thing that you can do is place a deep ward in the lane, which will show you when the enemy mid goes to make their roams. Then you ping out the roam and hope your team listens. That's the only thing you can do if you are being screwed over by your team. There are also a lot of mid laners that don't actually want to have a warding totem and you can swap to a sweeper if you are playing a very roam heavy champion, say Talon. If you are playing Talon and you plan to roam the entire game because you can't kill your mid lane or you're just looking to shut down one certain lane, then a sweeper is going to be a lot more beneficial to you than a warding totem because it's going to allow you to clear vision and again, force those lanes to play safer or it might secure you a kill that you wouldn't normally get. Some other picks that would really like roaming would be, for example, Aurelian Soul, Kled, Zed, Kiana, stuff like that. Now don't worry, I didn't forget about top lane. Top lane in the laning phase is by far the simplest to ward as. Your only job is to make sure that you place wards that protect yourself. That's it. Sometimes this will mean that you're just sitting on two wards the entire time, because if the other four members of the enemy team are already showing, there is absolutely no reason for you to place a ward. If there's been a 4v4 going on bot lane for the past two minutes, then there's no reason for you to go place a ward in your river that's not going to help you. You already know where everyone is, that ward isn't going to help you. And likewise, placing a deep ward in the enemy jungle, again, isn't going to help you until that fight is actually over and you don't see the enemy jungler anymore. Whenever you have vision of four people, don't place your wards. Aside from that, the biggest rule of top lane is do not place wards close to your lane unless you have some insane escape like Camille. The further into the river or enemy jungle that you can get the ward, the better it's going to be because this will give you more warning as to when the enemy jungler could be top. Remember, the enemy jungler is not going to invest a whole lot of time top a lot of the time unless you're playing against like Renekton, Elise, who will just permadive you. So in most of your games, you don't need to worry about having vision on the enemy jungler if they're still there or not. Okay, and moving on into the mid game, this is really where the vision game starts picking up pace and it's going to become much more team oriented. During the mid game, you should be less focused about what each individual role should be doing and what trinkets they should have, and you should be more focused on what the individual trinkets do, because you're not going to have the same setup in every single game. Sometimes your mid laner might have sweeper, sometimes you might have four sweepers because you're playing against Teemo. It's going to depend, it's going to differ in each and every game. Typically in the mid game, you're either going to group as three or four with one or two people in the side lanes depending on your team comp. Starting with the warding totem. Typically, this is something that you're going to want to keep if you ever intend on going to the side lane. Obviously, you can group with it, but it's very important that you get at least one ward out if you're going to go side lane, because this is going to protect you from being two or three manned. Now, obviously, since the ADC support and jungle are never going to be side laning on their own, they don't need this. Aside from that, the support already has their support item, which gives wards. So these three roles will typically not have warding totems later on into the game, unless, again, you're playing like Lee Sin, for example. So why is it so important to have a warding totem as a side laner? This is because the support isn't going to come to your lane to ward for you, and you do need vision in order to safely side lane. So you're going to want at least one ward if you ever go side lane. This is going to allow you to farm for free. And if you plan on split pushing and pressuring towers, then you're probably going to want two wards deeper into the enemy jungle. This will give you more warning and more of a chance to survive if you do get two or three manned. Now, if you are something that alternates between side laning and grouping with a team, say a mage that's going to be going off into the side lane to pick up farm before grouping with a team for an objective, then you can still sit on that warding totem, use one ward to keep you safe while you're farming if you're not close to your team, and then you can use other wards to help the support out with the vision game. Make sure that you're not lacking any vision when going for an objective, or place a ward on that Baron, for example, if your support runs out of wards. Now, while we're talking about wards, let's talk about the support items. These do grant wards, and you're going to want to be keeping these wards close to where your next objective is. 
If Dragon is spawning in 50 seconds and there is no Rift Herald, then you should not be placing wards on the top side of the map. Always keep the wards closer to the next objective to spawn and then play to that side of the map. It's going to allow you to control that side of the map, which gives the enemy chance a lower chance of securing that objective, lower chance of soloing that objective for free, and it's going to give you a better chance of just winning the objective game. If there is no objective coming up anytime soon, then you can place neutral wards that just exist strictly to protect you. I'd like to emphasize that you want to put wards around the objective, not directly on it. This is because you're going to be on the objective, which gives vision inherently. You don't need a ward on Baron to know that you're doing Baron and to see inside the pit. Instead, you want to put wards in locations that you think the enemy team will contest from. If we go ahead and we reverse this theory, then we can tell one of the main usages of Sweeper in the mid to late game, and this is to clear vision around points that you want to contest from. All you really need to do is sweep around your side of Dragon or Baron Pit, and that will clear any vision that they have and make it a lot harder for them to just do the objective, because they're not going to be able to fight you as easily if they don't have vision. This usage of Sweeper is typically what I see in higher elo games. It doesn't always happen in lower elo games, but in most diamond games, people will sweep around Baron. But they completely miss out on the other usage of Sweeper, which is to deny vision on rotations. Now, speaking of rotations, we're finally getting into the late game. Rotations are a very late game focused topic. And this is going to be the difference between a good team and a great team. Now, a lot of the time in lower elos and even up till diamond, players will just siege a lane forever. They'll just sit mid as five until something happens, until a fight breaks out and somebody wins. And this is not the ideal way to play the game. In fact, it's been dubbed NA RAM. So what are we going to do to prevent ourselves from NA ramming? Now, you're probably expecting something really complex, but it's not at all. All you have to do is rotate to a different objective, siege a different tower, go to Baron, go to Dragon, do something different. Okay, but how do we make this rotation effective? Because you could just walk to Baron, but if you walk over Vision to Baron, then the enemy team knows you're doing it. They know that you're not sitting in a brush waiting to kill them all, and suddenly they're going to be contesting Baron. So how can we make these rotations effective? While you're waiting for the next wave to crash, send one of your teammates towards the next objective that you're going to do and have them clear any vision out going towards that objective. Having cleared the path that you're going to use to rotate towards the next objective, the enemy team is going to be forced to be hesitant to check any brushes blind just in case you're all standing in that brush waiting to kill them. This is going to give you a lot more time to work with when going for an objective. This is how you can use rotations to break yourself free of that NA RAM, get yourself a free Baron, Dragon, another tower, anything really. This is going to be the best way to translate your lead into more objectives in the late game instead of just stalling out the game. Okay, so what do we do if we find ourselves in this scenario? The enemy team sweeped out a path the Baron and they walked over it. You have no clue if they're waiting to death brush you or if they're doing the Baron right now. How can you deal with this? Well, if you've been paying close attention, you'll notice that there's a trinket I haven't covered in this entire video yet, and that is going to be the Farsight Totem. This is going to be your blue ward. Typically, your ADC is going to have this, but sometimes a control mage will also take it. This blue ward is your bailout mechanic, okay? This ward exists to give you vision from a safe distance on a certain objective when you desperately need it. This ward is not to be used to make a collection of blue wards all across the map in every single brush. That's not how you use this ward, because then when the time comes and you actually need it, suddenly it's on an 80 second cooldown and you can't use it to see if they're on the Baron. In fact, whenever I play against somebody who's just spamming blue ward off of cooldown, I will oftentimes just rush the Baron, because I know they don't have blue ward to check it, so they don't have a way to safely tell if we're on Baron or not. Now, if there's no imminent threat of any huge objective being taken, then you can use this ward to scout out any brush that you might think that a Kha'Zix is sitting in waiting to kill you. That's an acceptable way to use this ward as well, but only if you don't have an imminent threat of an objective being done. 
Now this is just about all that I have for you for a brief overview on the basics of the Vision game and how you should be starting to play it. Now if you enjoyed this video and you want another one like it, we've got a video on the specifics of warding on our channel that you might really enjoy. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our website, GameLeap.com. Over there we've got hundreds of guides, all done by Challenger players, sorted into a quick and easy to use courses system. We've got courses both on the five fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses. So if that is something that interests you, then make sure to check us out using the link in the description below. Our website is by far the best learning tool out there for you to help improve your League of Legends gameplay and knowledge. So if that's something that you are looking to do, make sure to check us out. As always, I'm Panther. I hope you learned something valuable and I will see you in the next one.